Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today's lesson is going to be an introduction to strip diagrams. Now, when I refer to strip diagrams in this tutorial, I'm also going to be talking about tape diagrams and bar models. These, all three of these vocabulary words refer to the same thing, but I'm going to call them strip diagrams in our video. Now, strip diagrams look like this, a strip of tape. That's why they're called strip diagrams or tape diagrams. Now, strip diagrams represent number relationships. They represent story problems and numbers that can be added. You can subtract using strip diagrams. You can multiply and divide using strip diagrams. So we're going to talk about all four of these types in this tutorial. Now, I cannot talk about strip diagrams without also talking about part-part-whole relationships. And here is a part-part-whole model. You worked on these probably in first and second grade. Here's another type of model. It's the same one, but the whole is at the top and the parts are at the bottom. And here's another model. You can see the whole is at the top, and this one has more than two parts. It has four parts. So let's look at some models that would fit these types. Here is a part-part-whole relationship, and you can see that my whole is 29, the part is 13, and I'm missing this part here. Now in this case, you're probably going to subtract, and what you're gonna have to watch out for when you work with these models is, are you missing a part, or will you be trying to find the whole? Are you missing one or more or both? So in this case, I'm gonna take 29, I'm gonna subtract 13, and when I do that, I get 16. So 16 is my missing part. Let's look at another example. 61 is a part, 39 is a part, and you can see that I'm looking for the whole. So I'm gonna add 61 plus 39, and when I add those together, I get 100. That is my missing whole. Now it's important to note that this model could have fit in this one, or this one, and vice versa. This model could have been either one of these. Now let's look at my last one here. Let's say that in this case I have four parts and each part is a seven. So since I know that I have four parts, I'm going to use the number four. There is seven in each part and I'm going to multiply four times seven to get a whole of 28. I found my whole. Now if I wanted to, I could add 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7, but I want to work smarter and not harder, so I'm going to multiply because that makes it easier. Let's move on. Let's look at an example of strip diagrams. Mark jogged 4 miles a day for 6 days. How would the strip how would the number of Mark's total miles jogged be represented on a strip diagram and I'm looking for his total miles jogged. Well, let's see. In one day, he did four miles. It, the next day he did four miles. The next day he did four miles all the way up to six days. So when I add these fours, what I'm going to get is his total. So I can add four six times, or I can take six days of jogging times four miles each day, and I can find a total of 24. So I was missing my whole, and I found it by multiplying six times four. Now I can't talk about strip diagrams without also talking about variables. This is a huge part of strip diagrams. And a variable is a letter or a symbol. You'll oftentimes find letters that stands for a value in an equation. We also call that unknowns. You're looking for an unknown in an equation. And let's look at an example. 60 plus 40 equals X. X is my variable. I need to figure out what X is. And I know that 60 plus 40 equals 100. So X equals 100. 10 times M equals 60. Well, I know my multiplication tables and I know that if I put a six here, I will get 60. So M equals 60. 
Now let's look at some examples of strip diagrams with variables. As you can see in your first one, my whole is 1,782. My parts are 60 and 1,710. Now I can use some mental math on this. I'm gonna add these two, and when I add them up, I get 1,770. I'm gonna take my whole 1,782 and I'm going to subtract to find my variable, to find my missing part. And when I take these numbers and subtract them, I get a difference of 12. So S equals 12. Let's look at the next example. In this example, you can see that my variable is X and I'm missing the whole. So I'm going to add these three parts. And when I add the three parts, I will find my variable, I'll find my whole. When I add them up, I get 38. So X equals 38. Now let's look at some examples of multiplication. So as you can see on this one, I have five parts. One, two, three, four, five, and each part is the same. Now, my variable M is what I'm looking for, so I'm gonna take my 45 that is in each part. I'm going to multiply it by the five parts that I have and I'm going to get a total of 225. That is my total. That is what my variable equals to. Now let's look at the next one. In this case, this one's different. Now I have variables inside of my parts. I have six parts, so I know that each variable C is going to have the same value. So something times 6 is going to give me a whole of 12. So what could I multiply by 6 to get 12? Well, you know your facts, so what times 6 equals 12? C equals 2, because 2 times 6 equals 12. Now, it's important to note that on strip diagrams, what you're really looking for and what you'll see most of the time is that each box is proportional. So in these cases, these boxes were the same size. These boxes were the same size because they represented the same number. But a lot of times, if the number is bigger, it will have a bigger size part. If it's smaller, it should have a smaller size part. Let's look at some examples of problem solving. This is the big thing you're gonna to have to do with strip diagrams. You're gonna to have to problem solve. And you'll either have to have a problem and then draw a strip diagram to match it or use strip diagrams to solve, or you'll be given a strip diagram and you may have to write the problem. So let's look at the problem here. Mrs. Lozano had to get her car serviced. She spent $35 on her oil change and $15 on her car wash. What was the total she spent on her car? So here's an example of what the strip diagram would look like. $35 was for the oil change, that's a part. $15 was her car wash, that's also a part. And these two parts, I'm gonna use them to find the whole. And I'm gonna do some mental math here. I'm gonna add them together in my head and I know that the total I spent on that was $50. So that is my whole, that's what I was missing. Look at another example. Mr. Smith paid for party supplies for his son's party. He paid $23 for decorations, $45 for the cake. If he spent $100 on his son's party, how much should he spend on the food? And here's my helpful information. Here's my strip diagram. He spent $23 for decorations, $45 on the cake. I'm looking for the food. I don't have that. And I have the total amount or the whole of what he spent. So in this case, I'm going to take the parts that I have, which is 23 and 45, and I'm going to add them. When I add these up, I get 68. 68 is not my answer. It's going to help me find this missing part. So I'm going to take 100 minus 68, and when I subtract those, I get 32. He spent $32 on the food at his son's party. Let's look at one more example. Mrs. Gonzalez spent five days swimming in her pool. Each day she swam for 25 minutes. 
how many minutes did she swim over the five days? And here's a strip diagram that would fit this problem. So each one of these parts represents a day and that's five days that she swam and each day she swam for 25 minutes. So how am I going to find the whole that I'm missing? I'm going to multiply and I know that 25 times 5 is 125. So she swam 125 minutes over all five days. I hope that this video was helpful and helped you understand strip diagrams better. If you were interested in any of the resources that were in this video, please look in the description box and it'll link back to some of where, where you can find these resources. Um, if you'd like to see more videos in the future, please like and subscribe to my page. Thank you for visiting. Have a great day.